Welcome back to Today in Atlanta Sports. It is February 11th, and yesterday was the NBA trade deadline. We expected some moves over the last month, but as it got closer, you know, as we talked about yesterday, we said 90% chance there were reports that the Hawks stand still, and that's exactly what they did. So my question to you, Alex, is other teams got better around the Eastern Conference. Did the Hawks lose this trade deadline by not making any moves? Um, I guess hindsight's twenty twenty, and by playoff time, we'll really know why. No, but I don't think so. Reports surfaced that Travis Schlink just wasn't willing to meet Daryl Morey's uh, demands for Ben Simmons. Uh, and once Ben Simmons was off the table, uh, Marcus Smart wasn't going to happen because Boston's really in the thick of things and they're playing really well. They made a move. They made additions. Uh, so there wasn't really anything out there for the Hawks to really do. Uh, the Derek White trade was a little annoying. I mean, it didn't give up much. I think it was just pretty much it was just a first round pick for him. Um, I think it was protected. Uh, but I think, you know, when we look back at this trade deadline come playoff time, I think Hawks fans will be um, reluctant if, to say that we lost at the trade deadline. Uh, sometimes it's better just to stand pat. You know, you don't want to overpay in this kind of scenario. I said yesterday the Hawks championship window is – we're just entering it. We're in the beginning stages of it. And you don't want to shorten it by going all in immediately. Uh, the East got much <laughs> – it got much harder – uh, the Nets and the 76ers got much better. They both got exactly kind of what they needed. The uh, Brooklyn needed perimeter defense. Um, and um, yeah, I was shocked 76- by everything Brooklyn got, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, for James Harden. I mean, I, I like Harden and all, and like, but he's, ha- he's definitely having a down year. This is his worst year he's probably had in the last six or seven years. And he looks a little bit out of shape. He's had trouble with injuries. I'm not totally sold on the fit with Embiid. I'm not really told on, totally sold on Harden as a championship caliber player, especially at this point in his career. And, I mean, they not only did they get Ben Simmons, they get Steph Curry. They got to keep Patty Mills. They got first-round picks out of it. I mean, yeah. holy shit. I mean, for everything we're talking about, Daryl Morey having this ridiculous asking price, well, it turns out that ridiculous asking price was really just James Harden who, like I said yesterday, he has a little hard on for um, because I don't understand. He has an obsession with them. He kind of made that clear um, leading up to the trade trade deadline that he was he wanted James Harden. He wanted James Harden. And while at at first the Nets were like, no way that's going to happen as they started losing, it became, you know, hey, maybe we should do this. Maybe we do need to shake things up. And God, did they fleece the 76ers? I mean, absolutely fleeced them. I mean, dude, I'm not even totally sure in a playoff atmosphere how much. And people are going to say this is ridiculous, and I, I might get chat on this if I said this on a on a on a podcast that got more views. I'm not totally sure how much more of a winning piece James Harden is than Seth Curry. I mean, I watched Seth. All right, Curry. that's ridiculous. No, no, no. Say. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I watched Seth Curry go out there and drop 30 on the Hawks' head nightly. Nightly, it doesn't matter. Nightly. It doesn't matter. No, it the, does matter. The, because the 76ers it matters. It matters. No, listen, 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 because it matters on the way you play basketball. This ISO ball that you play one on one, it's it's proven not to work in the playoffs for James Harden time and time and time again. But what Seth Curry does is not only can he give you 30 on any any given night on a super, super efficient way. He also spreads the floor. You get to keep Patty Mills. I'm telling you, bro, this is an absolute fleece job. And on top of that, they get Ben Simmons, who I think is a better piece than James Harden. So, like, I'm not like I agree. I agree to a certain extent, but we're at all right. James Harden is averaging what 23, 9, and 10. 22, 9, and 10. I mean, that's still incredible. That's all star caliber. Hang on. Let me just finish. That's all star caliber. And it's exactly what Philadelphia needed. They didn't have a guard that can initiate and initiate the pick and roll with Joel and B. They needed that. So, yes, I agree with you that, you know, they, I agree the Nets won that trade, but. They both oh, got substantially it, better. How they, much did they win? Yeah, but they both got substantially better. Philadelphia undoubtedly got better. I think, yes, they did get better. How much better? I'm not sure. I'm telling you, bro, like I, people are sleeping on Seth Curry. You know what Seth Curry is averaging this year? 20? 15, 4, and 4 on 49% from the field and 40% from three. Bro, those numbers, James Harden shooting 41 from the field, 33 from four from three that's Russell Westbrook numbers James Harden is a fatter Russell Westbrook a little slightly more skilled than Russell Westbrook this year I I like can he be better will he be better with Joel Embiid in the 76ers that remains to be seen 
I'm not totally sold. I, like, I would obviously rather have James Harden if I'm building a team than Seth Curry. But on a championship team that already has, you know, pieces, obviously, you know, you kind of had to make this deal if you're the 76ers because Ben Simmons isn't is not willing to play. But like, I, I like if if we're the, if you're looking at the Hawks right now, like, would I rather have James Harden on my team or Seth Curry? Like, I think I would take Seth Curry. Like that's so what that's I'm what I so a lot of people are going to be mad that the Hawks you know the Hawks didn't have a James Harden to trade, um, you know they didn't have that guard who the 76ers were looking for that could initiate the offense with the pick and roll with Joel Embiid. Uh, so they would have had to given up a ton more than what the Nets gave up. Um, but that's aside the point. Obviously, we'd rather have Seth Curry than James Harden because we have Trey Young. I mean, obviously, like, you know, it, it, it just fits better. But every single team, if their rosters were empty, would take James Harden over Seth Curry. That's ridiculous of you to say. That is ridiculous. What do you mean? I just, I literally just said that. What are you talking about? How is that ridiculous? I literally said the exact same thing you said. I said, if I am the Hawks, though, would I rather have James Harden or Seth Curry? I think I would take Seth Curry. Yeah. Okay. We're in agreement. Like that's, that's what I'm saying. And I, and I don't like, I, I just, and I really don't think this is like that ridiculous of a take. I know it sounds ridiculous because what James Harden's done over his career, but if you look at his numbers this year and just how he's looked and the injuries and you look at, you know, what Seth Curry did in the playoffs last year, particularly in big games against the Hawks, you look at what he's doing this year and he's only getting better. I mean, I think Seth Curry, you know, if you gave him as much shots as James Harden, he's a 20 to 25 point third, maybe, maybe even more than that a game score. You know, the thing is he plays his role so much better than a guy like Harden does. And I'm, I'm just saying like, I'm so shocked at, at that trade and how much they were able to pull off. I mean, it's mind blowing, boggling to me for everything Daryl Morey was doing, rejecting trades, these huge offers from all these teams asking for three and four first round picks for him to give up Ben Simmons and so much more for James freaking Harden. I mean, that is that blows my mind. It really does. It really does. I understand you wanted another star for Ben Simmons, but giving up Seth Curry, giving up first round picks, not even getting a Patty Mills back in return. Mind boggling to me. I'm worried. Who needs a Patty? Who needs a Patty Mills when you have a Paul Mills at baby? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to talk shit about the anchor man. The anchor man's that dog. But I mean, dude, it truly was. I was shocked when I saw that deal. I really was. Uh, I think the Nets, you look at the Nets roster now. Good fucking luck to anybody who plays them. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, good they're nasty. Good, good, they're nasty. Absolutely good luck. I mean, bro. I mean, just imagine this. You have Ben Simmons running that point, and then surrounding Ben Simmons, you just clear the floor for Patty Mills, Seth Curry, Kevin Durant, and Kyrie Irving. Good night. Good night. I mean, you're get, you're going to get absolutely wiped off the floor. They're going to put up 150 points a game. And I say this time and time <laughs> again, the defense, the defense is going to – defense comes – comes and goes or it, you know it comes during the playoffs it don't matter against that lineup good luck ain't nobody stop and the thing is ben simmons can play the five defensively so you're wondering if oh, anything can defensively he can play the four and kevin durant can play the four with very easily yeah. but now you have this yeah. versatile now i don't love the guards and kyrie irving and patty mills and seth curry but obviously it's not going to be just them on the floor the whole time i mean that that to me especially if kyrie irving decides to get the vaccine and can play every game uh, you know, if, if he if he gets cleared to play every game, I, I don't know how the Nets don't just run away with the championship. I think they got so much better. They got deeper. Uh, and, and now you look at it, I guarantee you they're going to be, you know, some of the first, you know, teams to come up when the buyout guys come out. You know, I guarantee you everyone's going to want to go to Brooklyn. They'll get whoever they want. They'll get the pick of the litter. Uh, I look at that team and I say, unless someone gets injured, you know, which has been the problem with them. But unless someone gets injured, that team is going to win the championship. And I don't think it's going to be particularly close. I, I would be shocked if they went to seven games with anyone with that roster, if they can stay healthy. Yeah, I, I'm excited to see KD play with Ben Simmons because uh, KD can play with anybody, anybody, any any era, any style of play. KD fits. Uh, he's just that good. He can do so much for you. I'm so excited to see him and Ben Simmons play. Seriously, the best, arguably the best defender and arguably the best offensive player are on the same team now. I mean, that's going to be hard yeah. to beat. I mean, yeah. So, I mean, I got that definitely. We kind of went on a tangent, but we're talking about the Eastern Conference here. Listen, it's going to be a tough road. This is what we're talking about. It's going to be a just, tough road for the Hawks. I don't think there's any way the Hawks 
can compete with the the with the Nets in seven games uh, when they're healthy, but I don't think no anyone way. can. So I don't think it's a I don't think yeah. that's like a knock on them. I don't think any team can. I don't think the Warriors can. I don't think the Suns can. I, like I I just don't think anybody will compete with that team healthy. They got thirty games to get their chemistry right. They'll they're going to be just fine as long as they can stay healthy. Uh, but as far as everybody else in the Eastern Conference, bring it on. I mean, I do think the Sixers got better. Obviously, getting a James Harden for a not playing Ben Simmons, they get better. Do I think they're better than they are last year without Seth Curry? No, I don't. I don't think they are better than they are than they were last year with Ben Simmons and Seth Curry and the rest of those team pieces. So I definitely think the Hawks could be the Sixers in a season. I think the East in general is way tougher. Um, you know, the Celtics have been playing really good basketball with Marcus Smart back, um, and they get Derek White. I mean, they're going to be better than they were last year. The Cavs are a team that I really like. But at the end of the day, you know, Trey Young and these Hawks, um, they've been playing better at, uh, recently. Um, I think they're going to play well down the stretch. And I think in the playoffs, nobody's going to want to see them, even a team like the Nets. Now, I think everyone else, they, they could beat. But, you know, when the Nets are healthy, it's, you know, it's, it's game over. And it's game over for the rest of the league. That team is just going to be... I'm really excited to see what that team looks like. And maybe I'm wrong. Who knows? I mean, sometimes these super teams, I mean, we saw what happened to James Harden, Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant. Everyone thought that was going to result in multiple championships, and they went 13-3 and three total. So uh, things can happen. Um, do I want to call the Hawks losers? No, because at the end of the day, I didn't think they were going to win a championship no matter what they did. Derek White wasn't going to make the, the difference. Uh, I don't think any of those pieces, unless they went and got Ben Simmons and stole him away from Brooklyn, that was the only thing that was going to make a difference. I don't think that was ever going to happen. We were never going to give up that much. So in reality, I can't call the Hawks losers. They didn't lose anything. They got a first round pick. This in, in all the trades, they netted a first round pick in Kevin Knox for Cam Reddish. Uh, I don't think they were going to win a championship with any other move. So no, they're not losers. They're just, you know, they're just, they're just, you know, they are where they are. You know, they're not, they weren't a championship team. They weren't a championship team last year. They weren't a championship team this year. Like they're just not there yet. So uh, I know Hawks fans don't want to hear that. They want to be like, oh, we made it to the Eastern Conference Finals last year, guys. The Eastern Conference was shit last year, and was the whole league was decimated by injuries. Like let's, we got to be real with where the organization is. Uh, some people want to act like we're six steps further than we are. Yeah, I think it's, uh, you know. You, you see this all the time when you go out with a bunch of friends and, you know, one friend's got deep pockets and the other friends with shallower pockets tries to keep up with the richer friend and he makes a fool out of himself. And that's exactly what the Hawks didn't do. The Hawks didn't try to keep up with all of these other teams. Uh, maybe they surprise us and win a series or something, but, you know, you nailed it right on the head. They're just not there yet. But again, the window just open yeah i mean for the 76ers i mean it's 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 closing for the nets i mean i know kevin durant's under contract for till 2024 or 5 something like that their window is probably a little uh longer open but i mean the hawks but are they're in win now, now. they're like they yes. need to yes. win a championship now and before they're rebuilding you know what when when kevin durant decides to bounce or when he says i'm unhappy i want to trade i mean you're now you got a full rebuild on your hands uh, just fucked. like in the 76ers are not too far behind. Like, you, you know, they have to win now or they're, you know, they're done for the next 15 years. You know, the Hawks are not even close to that. We just signed Trey Young to a five-year extension. John Collins just got a five-year extension. DeAndre Hunter hasn't even, and, and a lot of these guys haven't even started their next extensions. Um, relax. It's going to be okay. Enjoy, yeah. you know, fun basketball. This is a fun Hawks team to watch. I think they're going to be fun to watch down the stretch. I think they're going to be fun to watch in the playoffs. I think they're going to be games where Trey Young drops 50 and John Collins has 25 and Kevin Herter contributes and Hunter contributes and they go and push the Nets to six game or beat a team like Philly. It's going to be fun, but like enjoy those moments. Those are successes. That's, that's not where we're supposed to be at this point in the rebuild, you know? So, yeah, exactly. If, if you want to, you know, think about it like this, Hawks fans, I mean, look at the fucking Knicks. They're losers. Loser ass franchise. We were in the same exact place a year ago going into the playoffs. Going into that matchup, nobody picked the Hawks. Everybody was on the Knicks bandwagon. The, everybody was like, oh, the Knicks championship window is just open. RJ Barrett, Julius Randle, all this, blah, blah, blah. Look at where they are now. Selling pieces. I mean, the Hawks are exactly where they want to be. I mean, Schlink has this team, has the roster in a, in a perfect position to strike when the moment presents itself. 
So we just have to be patient. Yeah. And that's difficult for me to really swallow because I want mm-hmm. fucking action. Yeah, so do I. But, and we're not even talking about, you know, I just threw out all those names, but we're not even talking about Jalen Johnson, who could be a really good piece in the future. We're not even talking about the development of Anyeke Okongwu, who's only going to get significantly better over the rest of this year and into next year. DeAndre Hunter, you can say the same thing about him. Who knows what Sharif Cooper could be in a year or two. We're not even talking about the fact that the Hawks have like four first round picks over the next two seasons. Like, relax. Like, there is, they yeah. have everything they could possibly want. Every piece on their roster is movable. They have no bad contracts. Danilo Gallinari is their worst contracts. People were offering a first-round pick for him. And he is off the books next year. I mean, you are talking about you, the Hawks are in a perfect, perfect position for long-term success. Just be patient. I promise you. Travis Schlenk, I trust the guy. He really hasn't made a bad move. You know, his entire, I mean, you talk about like maybe one bad draft pick and Amari Spellman, his, his entire tenure as the Hawks GM. And like, is that really a bad draft pick? The 30th overall pick in the draft rarely turns out to be anything good. So I trust well, this the guy. NBA draft. Yeah, the NBA draft is a joke. When was the last time a rookie came in and actually did something? So for him to hit on all these draft picks is even, is that much more impressive to me because I mean, the success rate of the NBA draft is so much lower than any other league. In yeah, my I opinion. mean, you look at some drafts, you look at some first rounds in some drafts and some bad drafts. I mean, it's hard to find a starting caliber player. And it's yeah. like, you know, and just in the whole first round. And Travis Schlenk has found a starting caliber player, a really good caliber player in pretty much every position that he's been put in, whether it's top five, top 10, top 25. And we're going to okay. have, you know, four first round picks. I still believe Jalen Johnson can be a piece. I, I'm so confident in where the Hawks are headed. So fans that are upset, you know, you just got to take a little reality check, realize where this team is on paper, realize the landscape of the rest of the league. They weren't winning a championship this year. There's no reason to give up a first round pick, even for Derek Wright in that Derek White in that scenario. Like, it, like you can say, oh man, the Celtics got better. Who the fuck cares? Are they going to win anything? No. Like, oh, they, they're going to compete a little bit better in the playoffs. Ooh, is that what you want? Is that all you're looking for? And then you're going to be the same guys who were like, it's championship or bust. Well, Derek White doesn't get us to a championship. So shut no. up. I don't want to hear it. So the Hawks didn't lose at the trade deadline. The only way they would have lost is if they forced a move and gave up too much for a guy like Ben Simmons or even Derek White or, or whoever you wanted them to go for. So let's move on to some winners here. Not saying that the Hawks aren't winners, but these are some clear winners. The Rams and the Bengals Sunday night. We obviously won't be here on Saturday or Sunday for this show, so we're going to talk about it today. The Rams are currently four-point favorites. I think everybody and their mother is on the Rams. Uh, On paper, I look at this matchup, I say Rams, Rams. I mean, you look at the Bengals' offensive line, you look at the Rams' defensive line, it just seems like a terrible matchup. But there's just something about those Bengals because it seemed like that the last two weeks, and they've come out winners. And I, all I have to say is I agree with most people that it should be Rams favored. Um, the defensive line, Aaron Donald, Leonard Floyd, Vaughn Miller, you have to think they're going to get after the Bengals' weak offensive line. You know, it's a terrible matchup for them. But, dude, there's just something about Joe Burrow. And, obviously, I got the LSU gear on. I made it very clear who my man is here. <laughs> but if you give him a chance in the fourth quarter, any chance, you're going to lose that game. Uh, you are going to lose that game. I was telling that to Chiefs fans when I was in Kansas City. I was like, even when we were, they were down 23, 21-3, I was like, you better stomp on his neck. You better, you know, kill him. Slay the dragon right now because if you let, if you give him a chance, just give him like a touchdown game and one score game in the fourth quarter, he's going to find a way to win. And, you know, you see, you see the way he did it against Kansas City. It wasn't sexy. He didn't have the best stats. Chandler Jones was wrapping his neck around. He shakes him off and runs for a first down, has two critical plays. And that's just what Joe Burrow does. He, it's, not, it's not the sexiest way. It's not going to be the sexiest way with this team. But they're going to find a way to win. And I like it's hard not to look at him as almost like a Tom Brady like early in his career. Like That roster is not so sexy right now. But damn, like that defense is playing hard. And I just think they can keep up in the game. The Rams offense, as, as many stars as they have, hasn't been moving the ball like crazy during these playoffs at all. And I think that Bengals defense can keep them in the game. And if you give Joe Burrow a chance, I'm taking the Bengals. Yeah, I love the Bengals, but obviously we're biased. But I will say this, and Tom Brady says has said this so many different times. Uh, if anybody hasn't watched his documentary, Man in the Arena, it's fucking incredible. 
Uh, he's such an inspirational man, player, person. Uh, and he's said it probably three different times. It covers each Super Bowl. Uh, the best team doesn't always win, folks. This isn't a seven-game series. This is one game. It doesn't always come down to the best team winning. <clears throat> the Bengals emulate a lot of what those early Patriots teams are. They're scrappy. Uh, they believe in themselves. They have that kind of back-against-the-wall mentality where a lot of these Rams, in my opinion, um, obviously, you know, Aaron Donald's hungry for a Super Bowl. Uh, Matthew Stafford's hungry for a Super Bowl. Uh, but to me, it just seems like uh, the underdog in this in this game in particular is just, oh, it's so nice. I, I, I just – I can't wait to see Joe Burrow do something magical on Sunday. I mean, I'm seriously getting goosebumps over the thought of it. And I know, you know what is actually annoying, and I just want to say this real quick. I love Joe Burrow more than the next guy, uh, as much as the next guy. But that video that, where he got cracked in that bowl game in 2018, the UCF bowl game, uh, where it's like, this is the moment, Joe Burrow. Like, it was like, dude, all right, fuck off, guys. Like, come on, let's, like... Y- I don't want to gatekeep LSU, but like I'm gatekeeping LSU. Like enough of uh, he's always been like this. That whole season he was like that. It wasn't just that one game. I mean, this guy is the real deal. I mean, he is ab- absolutely unequivocally now the most competitive quarterback in football. Tom Brady held that title for a while, and you know the margin is thin between all these guys. They're all professional athletes, but. Joe Burrow has that it factor, and his guys believe in him. Uh, Even if he's having a bad game, much like Tom Brady, they believe in him. They believe in him, and he believes in them. Uh, And I just – its it feels a lot like, you know, that LSU 2019 season. It's just the stars are aligning for Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, and the Bengals. Uh, Who day? We some bangs. Yeah, dude. I mean, I'm getting chills just thinking about it. It's crazy. Like, I've never thought that there would ever be a team that, like, makes me actually, like, I've always been a diehard, diehard Atlanta sports fan. Obviously, I created an own, my own website about Atlanta sports. Like, you can't really get more diehard than that. I never, th- and I never thought I would ever cheer for another team, like, actively be a fan of another NFL, MLB team. Joe Burrow just changed that. I mean, there's just some, I mean, bro, and if he can do that for me as a fan, just imagine what he's doing that to the players in that locker room. I mean, you can feel like you can feel that energy that he just brings to the table, the swag, the confidence that the, the, we're not underdogs. You could call us underdogs, but we're not. And it's it's dude, it's it's really amazing to watch. I've never seen anything like it. And I guess maybe the only you know comparable thing is Tom Brady. You know, you, you hate to bring up that comp like that guy, that comparison, because he is the greatest all time. He's the GOAT. But it's hard not to bring it up. I mean, and then you see a guy like Gronk say, oh, who do I want to go play with? I want to go play with Joe Burrow. Why do you think that is, bro? Who do you think that reminds him of? These aren't accidents. And why? And you go back to free agency. If you go and ask why the Bengals, the players they got in free agency, wanted to come to Cincinnati, they wanted to play with that guy. They wanted to play with Joe Burrow. They realized there was something special there. This guy could carry them. They want to play with a guy who, who wants to win, who can lead your team to a championship, and has that swagger. And man, it, it just, it's crazy how fast it's happened. But am I surprised? No, I'm not surprised. Especially when they got Jamar Chase. I mean, it's like these two guys are on the same wavelength. Like I've never seen a two guys ever in my life. I mean, they just know where each other are. Uh, yeah. Uh, Tom Brady is cool because he wins. Joe Burrow wins because he's cool. <laughs> like Joe Burrow shows up with those clear glasses yelling Joe Shiesty. I mean, this guy seriously has captivated the entire NFL. I mean, everybody who isn't rooting for the Rams, you know, who isn't a Rams fan, which are few. I mean, 90% yeah. of them probably still reside in or, St. Or Louis, not, which or is not, hilarious. Yeah. Or are not betting on the game. Yeah. They're, want Joe Burrow to win. I yeah. mean, he's completely taken the hearts of America. He, he, I mean, it gives me chills to think that my senior year at school, I watched him just decimate college football. I mean, we went to Texas, just destroyed them. Went to Alabama, whooped their ass. I mean, we beat, it was incredible. It, it was a magical season. And seriously, I'm gushing over him right now I, he is he, hard guys want to be him and girls want to be with him dude yeah 
yeah, I want to beat with them. I don't want to beat with them. But yeah, man, I mean, it's it's going to be a fun game. And I know we didn't get really into X's and O's. Uh, but I, I mean, I think this game is just, like you said, it's more than X's and O's. You know, the best team doesn't always win. I think if you go on paper, there's no doubt the more talented, more experienced team is the Rams. You know, they have everything going in their favor. But there's a reason why, you know, it's only plus 170 on the money line. And that's for that bad man, Joe Burrow. You know, it's it's not the bad man, Aaron Rodgers. It's that bad man, Joe Burrow. It's, <laughs> and, and, and I got to give credit, though. I, I have to say, though, like I think one of the things that's overlooked over this whole run by the Bengals is just how fantastic their defense has played in the playoffs and at, at the end of the season. You know, they really started to turn that corner and their defense has played lights out. I mean, that second half against the Chiefs might have been the best defensive half we've seen in the last decade. I mean, against that team. So I, I really... We have to like they're gonna they can win this game because their defense is that good. You know, it's not all just Joe Burrow. Their defense is gonna give Joe Burrow a chance. That's how I believe they're gonna win the game um, because they, they're they've been fantastic. They've been amazing. I mean, they're I would I would probably give. I know everyone has the stars on the Rams defense, Jalen Ramsey, Von Miller, all those guys. I think the Bengals defense are a more complete defense. They play as a more as a better unit. And I think that's going to be a, a the, the actual difference in the game because the key is just giving Joe Burrow a chance at the end. That's been the key every you know week of this playoffs is just give Joe Burrow a chance at the end and they win the game. I think that's the same formula to win this one. I think it's going to be tight. I would definitely take the points. Uh, I will say Matt Stafford ain't no scrub either. I mean, he showed up in the clutch in these playoffs. If, if, if I think it's going to be one of those games where uh, whoever has the ball last probably wins it. Um, that I think it'll come down to a field goal and let's just hope Joe Burrow's on the right side of it. Yeah, I think uh, the two most likely outcomes are uh, Bengals winning a close one or the Rams winning by, you know, a comfortable margin. That's what I think. Yeah, I mean, I could see that. Uh, it would really have to be a domination up front, um, the defensive line. Yeah. But I just, I, I, I give the Bengals too much respect defensively for them to uh, to get blown out of this one. Unless, unless they really can't move the ball offensively on the Rams' front because they can't protect Joe Burrow at all. But uh, I have a feeling you get two weeks to prepare. You'll, you should have some protections in place. You should have some quick, some quick routes in place. They, they should be able to, to be okay. Uh, I, got, I got some faith. Uh, we'll see. Zach Taylor, you know, he's going to be challenged. That's the funny thing. No one talks about Zach Taylor. I mean, Zach, talk- hang on. Let me say this. Zach Taylor is literally Coach O. I mean, Zach Taylor is so incompetent. Before Joe Burrow, it was like, ah, oh, this guy, uh, he's going to get wild. fired next year. Joe Burrow, I now, mean, Joe Burrow could make me and you a $50 million head coach. Saving <laughs> saving jobs, saving lives, dude. This guy's a hero. He really he's is. He's literally like Superman. He, he's, he's provided more jobs, made more people money than Joe Biden. <laughs> I mean, we need to really clip has. that. Yeah, that. That, wraps, that, that wraps it up for this episode. We will be back on Monday and we will discuss, of course, the Super Bowl. And hopefully we get some news and some Atlanta sports. Uh, MLB lockout could could get very close to end. I feel like we got a huge mo- meeting on Saturday between the players and the owners. I think we could have some very, very good news or some very bad news. So we'll definitely discuss that on Monday. Thank you, guys.